Hello friends, welcome to my second video. Today I'm going to talk you about a very nice topic. By the way, before I start the video, I'll give you a warning. You may hear some voices because I don't live alone. I have a roommate and she sometimes makes noise. But fortunately, I have a microphone and it only picks up the sounds around me. Even if you hear it, you will hear very little. I apologize in advance. Now today, what will I talk about? I'm going to talk about the 2000s, a period that is especially familiar to young people in my age range and directly coincides with our childhood. In fact, things from this period were falling in front of me a lot on social media, but now it has become an era that is both talked about and followed in fashion. For example, I'm talking about things like the low-waist fashion coming back and the music of that period being listened to again. Of course, I loved that period of the late 90s and early 2000s for as long as I can remember. I mean, I think about the channels I follow, they always contain the visuals of that period. It's been a harbour I've taken refuge in, let me put it that way. The reason for this is actually very simple because it was a period that coincides with my childhood. Also, my sister was in her adolescence at the time and everything sounded great. We were watching music videos together and there was MTV and I remember we were always looking at music videos from there. Then there were CDs and most importantly the people of that period. For example, I remember my sister's friends, I remember their clothes, I remember their makeup. I also remember that they had a lot of magazines and stuff like that so everything was sparkling for me and I thought that when I grow up like that I would have such a super wonderful youth. But of course it wasn't like that, we came across such a down period and anyway I don't want to touch on the subject. After all I come here to get out of reality and produce something and let's say I want you to get out of the spotlight a little bit, reminisce about the good times and learn a little bit. I mean I really want to get out of my head so this is a place where I take refuge. Let me continue now, it's uh, very easy to access the visuals of that period, you know the ones. What did that era have? For example, there was a Walkman, there were CDs, there was MSN and people of my age, 1970s and 1960s have already grown up in that period. Also, for example, people create nostalgia selections on social media. I see this very often. And there has been a vintage nostalgia fashion for a long time. For example, we started to know the makeup trends in the 2000s such as bright blue thin eyebrows, zigzag hair separations and we even remember them very badly. Content producers who are already interested in makeup also repeat these periods from time to time and produce them as content. In this video, I wanted to answer questions such as why did we feel that way? Why did people express themselves that way at that time? With more historical realities in a more intellectual process. Anyway, this is Those times were great. We live like a shitty youth. This is 2000s Turkey, the times of secularism. Everything was great. We all know this speech, don't we? <laughs> For example, I'm addicted to them. But I wondered on which ground it sits in the academic perspective and I wanted to learn the objective source of these feelings. I will give you the titles of the topics I will talk about more or less like this now. Look now, globalization, millennium, postmodernism, neoliberalism, modern man becoming lonely in the new social order, new metal. If I were writing a thesis on this subject, I would probably title it an evolution of the problems of the postmodern man who has become more and more lonely in the crowds that emerged in the context of globalization in the late 90s and early 2000s within the context of new metal clips. Now, believe me, I searched for many titles similar to this, but guys, but I did not come across an academic study directly on this subject. 
since I'm a person who works 9 to 6, my time is very limited. Guys, and I had to read hundreds of sources, select the information with tweezers and synthesis them, and I can't say that I actually made super readings on this part. I have to add a little bit of my own in in interpretation, of my own interpretation. So if you are an expert in the subject and I have a wrong transfer, I really apologize. In fact, write in the comments below so that I will have learned it. It will be good for me too. The sources I read were generally on the concept of generalization and I have done research on the identity of modern people related to globalization at the end of the 80s. Apart from that, I already have the series and clips of that period in my visual memory. I generally listen to music of that period. When I thought about it, the studies I read were quite parallel to them. Actually, I started from this. There is always a similar undertone in the clips of that period. There is a young man, for example, he stands in front of the crowd. Of course, that crowd is usually white collar people who are in an incredible hurry, running, running from one place to another, and no one notices this man. The stage colors are in such blue, gray, green tones. Just the technology of that period, a new era. Oh my god, we've entered the new millennium style colors. If you remember, the colors of the films were always like that and very pessimistic. The metric is like that. They always reminded me of a lonely person in a crowd. It reminded me of someone who doesn't know where to put himself. When I looked at the lyrics, I realized that this is what they were describing. These discourses have been around since the 90s, especially in Radiohead's Freaks Out and No Surprises songs. There is always a criticism of the society and the fact that we are all soulless, that governments don't speak for us, that we work in jobs we don't like, the depression that comes with that. We all know this feeling more or less. It pushes the person directly into this existential crisis. Who am I? Who is society? What are so many people running around for? Why do we feel lonely when so many people live together? In fact, the fact that we engage in such questioning stems from the atmosphere of this period, guys. The agenda at the end of the 80s was globalization. Some sociologists say that globalization has a long history. Some sociologists say that it is a brand new historical reality, but this does not concern us. What concerns us is how it affects us. In general terms, this is a situation related to the social structures that have emerged from two wars and are just being in an track shape. It's about the establishment of social states, systems and the masses that define themselves in this direction. Of course, there are concepts that we need to define. What's the social state? What's social identity? We need to know what it means, otherwise it would be a very road, that is, these words we speak, which are words that we use very often, even in everyday life, there are many technical problems that we can experience in the public, such as illness, old age, healthcare, work accidents, or unemployment and employment problems. There needs to be a structure that will personally deal with this. This is a very natural thing, but before modernism, there was no specific structure and system for this. There are families and voluntary organizations, that's all. They intervene in problems. For example, the first legal practice for workers concepts such as insurance begin in 1880. It takes shape between 1880 to 1945. The social security system develops between 1945 to 1975. The period after 75 is considered by sociologists as the crisis phase of the welfare state. This is related to the adoption of neoliberal policies in the world. If we talk about what neoliberalism is and how it causes globalization, or even summarize it, it's a structure based on individualism, based on personal initiatives rather than the state and with, with an incredibly liberal let them do it mentality. It's actually a structure related to competition in the market and the economy. It also includes transnational organizations and agreements and these agreements are more visible than statism. In other words, the state is pacified in the situation. After 1945, Roosevelt had the IMF established. Here, for example, we can talk about global talks. 
there is a super size situation here. Neoliberalism means reducing the budget allocated for, un for un unemployment and for neoliberalism the unemployment means nothing. There are people for whom budgets are allocated in vain, who take up space in economic traffic in vain. There is Thatcher in the UK, for example, who directly cuts the budgets of these aids and social investments. She downsizes public enterprises. She reduces public expenditures. Now, instead of the state father approach, there is something called individual and entrepreneurship and the free market. Of course, this doesn't mean that the nation state, the social state is completely disappearing. Of course, it still exists, but it's but it is undergoing change. The world is also undergoing change because it's beginning to evolve into a consumer society. For example, the first members of the industrial society are either producers or soldiers. So it's categorized in this way on the basis of value. Now the society is a consumer society. We have um, evolved into this. We have evolved in this. What prepares this is neoliberalism and globalization. <sighs> There is also the aspect of this evolution that forms our culture of the life, social identity and identity before the state. I will come to the identity aspect in a moment, but first I will talk about how our culture of life has changed and how it has settled into a system based on consumption. consumption. The end of the 90s, look, 80s long, the end of the 80s is a period of abundance in goods and services, right? Badrillard mentions accumulation and multi multiplicity. 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 And multiplicity as the most descriptive feature of this period. With the emergence of the credit cards, shopping and mass consumption accelerates. Accelerate. Accelerate. And mass consumption accelerates. Of course, the people of that period don't understand what a credit card is and some banks create a perception in their advertisements as if they distribute these cards for free, as if they give money points out of tin air as a favor <laughs> and people understand the truth when they sink into debt. Maybe this sounds ridiculous to you, but we still have a feeling that when money is withdrawn from the card as if the money is not going away, it is actually very normal and not ridiculous. I think it's very normal for people to have such a perception. Even today, it's a subject of humor. I just learned that money is gone when shopping from a credit card. Someone wrote there was even a tweet like that. It's very expected that people have such a feeling because you don't see that paper money constantly. Money is withdrawn from an imaginary place inside the card. Think about the people of that period. It's very, very normal to feel that way. To think that way, it's funny on the one hand. And then there are the shopping centers. It's a consumer paradise. Of course, these places give people a way of spending time rather than the material dimension. Now, consumption solves the problems of people about spending time. Of course, as time has changed, the culture of spending time has also changed. For example, I don't think that shopping centers are currently on the agenda because people have become conscious about this issue and we all know what capitalism is due to the fact that information sharing is very fast. We know that we are in the system, even the least educated people are aware of it. So at that time, in the 2000s, this shopping mall craze was too new to take a critical stance. Now I remember my childhood and my secondary school years, for example. I used to go to the mall so often that my family and I used to visit the mall as an activity on weekends. Many families did the same because you weren't just buying something material there. For example, there was a culture called cinema. Think about families with children. There are playgrounds and the supposes get rid of the problem of taking care of the child. When I look back down, the shopping center is a place where I can only only shop rather than a place to spend time. I think it even lost its meaning after online shopping. At least I don't remember going for two or three years. And 
You can't do more fun things on the internet. In other words, people who can't find anything don't throw themselves into the shopping center. They throw themselves into Netflix. Again, the culture of consumption, by the way, has only changed its form. At that time, people did not have such an opportunity. At least you had to buy a CD to watch a film. Uh, you had to go to the cinema to watch something. This is a separate issue, by the way. Anyway, as a result, people have such a free time problem. The things that fuel these are actually the things that define the culture of life. Very clearly, the people of that period were bombarded with a constant advertisement, a constant slogan bombardment, just like now. This bombardment was something new for that period because technology was needed to produce advertising items. Other programs are required so that you can prepare posters and cover all the streets. It used to be done by analog methods, but with the development of technology, this production became much more widespread and serialized. The content of the adverts was also aimed at creating a type of consumer who constantly wanted something. They made us want things that we never even thought of and whispered in our ears that we could reach it very easily by paying for it. Do you want to look as beautiful as that model? It's easy now. Use this product and you'll be super like her. And it's only this much money. Can you believe what they are promising? So people are addicted to it, of course. We constantly need to buy something. And on top of that, these also give us identity. Rather than a sense of satisfaction, there is an identity and a definition that we will have when we buy these products. When I say this, an easy description such as using the product of a very expensive brand and gaining prestige appears in my head, but it does not have to be so obvious and cartoonish. Let's simply say that I adopt a certain style, okay? I want to look like that and there are accessories and clothes that I need to buy to look like that. These are already identities defined by companies. They know what to sell to whom. That's why there are clothes that look bohemian, feminine or, I don't know, grunge. Because they all have a buyer and those buyers are already subconsciously feeding their perception of a certain identity when they get into that outfit. From here, I finally opened the door the theory of identity. I was stressing about how to connect it. Finally, I caught a nice transition. I want to talk about identity construction theoretically. The things I will talk about here will be identity with modernism, identity with postmodernism, identity with globalization, identity with individual society relationship, identity power and identity relationship. Turkish dictionary defines identity as all of the signs, qualities and characteristics that are specific to human being as a social being and all of the conditions that enable someone to be a certain person. We say human being as a social being because the formation of identity is based on the relationship between the individual and society while the individual constructs society society constructs the individual this way of construction also changes periodically for example modernism modernism which is based on enlightenment period becomes universal with the industrial revolution in other words in this process Second relation are as a to people with traditional belongings with life in modern cities. A citizen's super identity is added. This super identity is a brand new thing that is constructed because before that the individual only had an ethnic and cultural identity. He has an identity in this family environment with his relatives. Now, when we think about it in the most general dimension, friends, I'm saying this for the construction of identity, we are all human beings. So there is what we call the human dimension, the identity that the individual has about being human. We all have this identity. We are all human and our human needs are completely common. We are all hungry, we are cold, we want to be loved, etc. Then there are in-groups and out-groups. 
Our social group, we have a social identity in our class, at work or as a fan of a team. And finally, there is our own self, the personal identity of the individual. Sociologists make this classification in the most general way. After all, the relationship between individuals directly affects our personal identity. How our environment perceives us and, as identity, how we interpret this perception. These scales also change over time. For example, as I said, with modernism, people are assigned a higher identity and with postmodernism, the citizenship identity is being erased. Individualization is on the rise and these super freedoms and the idea of let anyone do whatever they want don't have super results. For one thing, there is no reality determined by the state or ideology. There are no social classes, members of a certain ideology, nation identities. The national state identity is going with postmodernity. These are no longer in circulation and are replaced by universal identities. Of course, this creates an identity crisis in people. You define yourself according to the food you consume, your pets, the music you listen to, your reading culture, your clothes, your car. In fact, you define yourself according to your lifestyle. Whatever kind of life you have, the adjectives that make you who you are, the adjectives that define you are, the adjectives that define that life. Well, it's our conception habits that determine our lifestyles. The centralization of consumption culture in people lives is already one of the most fundamental negati negativities of globalization. Inequality in income distribution, the creation social security and the increasing impoverishment of third world countries are some of the other neg negativities. This change also affects societies of guys. It adds a unique psychological style to the period. People inevitably express that style. For example, the clips, lyrics and discourses of that period are actually the things I've been ta talking about from the very beginning. By the way, I can't pass without mentioning this. I've been really into Avrupa Yakası this period. This was the most popular sitcom series of the 2000s in Turkey. Guys, I don't know if you can not find English subtitles, but I recommend you to watch it. When I watch it like this, I actually need to laugh, but I feel sad. On the one hand, seeing those periods of Turkey, I think Turkey's most beautiful years. The more I watch, the more I realize how much we have left behind. Apart from that, being exposed to the spirit of that period creates a very sweet feeling of nostalgia. For example, it was a period when most cultures in Turkey were just sprouting. Simply put, it was a time when alcohol and DJs were very popular. There is also a lot of talk about a new identity, the identity of the urban person. Uh, Fatosh, for example, constantly refers to this. She has definitions such as modern woman, modern working person. Apart from that, I realize that there is always this kind of discourse in Asli's mouth, such as the loneliness of the urban people, the identity crisis of the modern person. So these are the years when today's white collar is shaped. In Fight Club, the, the same things are told about being a slave to the system. Generation Y is a generation that criticizes this system. Of course, it's very normal. No, at that time, the children of the 80s, the first member of members of Generation Y, entered the business life. The face of business life is changing because Generation Y is different from Generation X before it. Let's talk a little bit about the concept of generation here. Sociologists define generation as the average time interval between the births of parents and their children. This concept of generation gains popularity with business administration because companies do this in order to determine and categorize consumption habits. Of course, this generation concept is much older concept. It was um, initiated by August Comte in the 1830s. His studies show that what we call generation is a culture that's formed by being shaped by the environment and values surrounding it during the growing age. He says this in his studies, you know the phrase, okay boomer, that we use most in our daily life. 
That phrase is a term belonging to this culture. For example, although we define the dinosaur generation by saying boomer, there is also before. For example, those born between 1900 to 1914 are called the Great Change in the Generation. 1914 to 1918 is referred to as the War Generation, 1918 to 1929 as the Hope Generation, 1929 to 1939 as the Depression Generation, and 1939 to 1945 as the War Generation. Of course, the economic consumer profiles of these generations are not as visible as other generations. In fact, the definition starts with boomer characteristic features. This is the segment born between 1950 and 1965, which we call boomer. It's a generation that recovers the population that they created after the war and reproduce rapidly. They are altruistic, workaholic and obedient. These generations believe in hard work, for example. They are traditionalist, like the silent generation before them. The silent generation is a generation that prefers balance and order and is, uh, is slow to adapt to technology. When we come to Generation X, this is the generation that comes after boomer friends. It is also called the transition generation, post boomers, shadow generation or lost generation. This generation is people who grew up taking their own responsibilities at a young age. Members of this generation are also people who have developed today's technologies. And now I would like to move on the 2000s generation which is the subject of our video. This is the generation born between 1980 and 2000, guys. Generation Y is a generation growing up with agendas such as terrorism, armed school raids, Iraq war, globalizing world obesity, AIDS, internet, mobile phones. Imagine that these developments are in a very narrow range. I guess I'm the last member of this generation, although these years are a bit unbalanced. Some sources don't count after 96. Anyway, now the people around us who are 25 years old, 30 years old, 35 years old are friends from this generation. In short, people who live the super times of the country, the generation that benefit from the blessing of the internet but spent their childhood on these streets and played arcade. They also have habits that are parallel to Generation Z. For example, tolerance, openness to innovations, asking why questions, demanding, rejecting authority and wanting to work in a job where they express themselves. It's a generation that is the result of the enrichment period that started after 1980 with the fashion of consuming and spending. The generation that saw rock and coke is actually a generation that we can call ruckus. Anyway, Rock was the mainstream at that time. You know the famous 1993 in a concert? There was a group of people who were portrayed in the media as metal youth. The visual identity of the 90s and early 2000s youth was rock. There is a reason for this, of course. Why rock is perceived as a symbol of youth has a history. It dates back to the 50s, Elvis, Chuck Berry's rock and roll times. This is the foundation. When we come to the 1960s, Chuck Berry's period of imprisonment and Elvis' military service period caused him to lose his influence. In America, in these years, there was public protest, the beat generation, road culture, anti-war, hippies and so on. Rock becomes something like the anthem of this group. There are discourses against racism and war in America and this audience listens to rock. The very first form of rock like this, names like the Rolling Stones, the Animals, Pink Floyd, The Doors, Bob Dylan. Also in England, rock and roll is changing its face and the Beatles become the pioneers of this new phase of rock music. When the friends came to America in 64, that year marked a very important turning point for rock music. Rock, which was the primary means of opposition to the system during the Woodstock period, is now becoming a concert culture. Especially the Vietnam War triggered the protest behavior of this mass incredibly. You know how we say sex, drugs, rock and roll, that's where it comes from. As they impose and technology advances, issues such as environmental pollution, destruction of nature, nuclear weapons come to the agenda. 
periods when the ecological balance deteriorates. Rock music is not indifferent to this situation and musicians reflect their feelings in their lyrics. Imagine that only 20 years have passed since the two world wars and the fear of a new war is already making the masses enthusiastic. By the 70s friends, by the 70s guys, rock becomes a fashion where such mates are imitated. I'm talking about names like Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Rolling Stones and people imitated the appearance of these people so it's become more and more of a culture industry. The main profit of record companies is the albums of these bands. Nevertheless, rock does not change its structure of being the other and raising its voice. As for Turkey, the 90s were the years when rock music was on the rise, especially in 93 MTV started broadcasting 24 hours a day on cable TV, modern rock bars opened in Istanbul and rock magazines started publishing which led to the golden age of rock. 93 the fact that giant names such as Metallica, Guns Roses, Bon Jovi and Scorpions took the stage at Inönü Stadium makes this period legendary especially for us. The people of the period are also busy with a pessimistic individualism and, uh, and before the 80 Cup, people's group in identity had a, such a political background and when that right is left is identity disappeared, people started to search for a different identity. Of course, this identity crisis is not unique to Turkish people. It's a period of globalization and the emergence of the virtual world. For example, in the songs of Radiohead, whose foundations were laid in the 80s, we always see concepts such as meeting, the new web, the uneasiness of the virtual world, the millennium. This is a band that the millennium generation has adopted a lot. It also influences the bands of the 2000s a lot. Coldplay is one of them, for example. There is a new metal hurricane in the world. There are bands like Linkin Park, Limp Bizkit, Nickelback and their songs are constantly shown on MTV. Of course, we are also experiencing the golden age of Turkish rap music. Bands like Athena, Moriotesi, Duman are now realizing their second albums, in other words, major albums. Shebnam Ferah was of course the crown jewel of those times. Manga explodes in the early 2000s. These bands of course performed the music that was a hit in the world at that time. New metal is defined as an alternative rock music that was formed by being influenced by hip-hop movement in the 90s, rap music, mainstream rap music and grunge. You can go to YouTube and write 2000s rock hits, you will already see the songs I mentioned. It's like a very sweet time travel for people whose childhood falls in the 2000s like me. This is a situation that I reproach a lot. In fact, when I read such tweets from the people who lived through those times, I'm sure you read them too. I'm sure that you have similar feelings with me. Nothing has any flavor left. And I don't know, there is not much compassion for this feeling. So what should I do now? Who am I going to be angry with because I wasn't born in those times? I mean. We can only be angry with the people who took those periods away from us and we can only put an end to it. We all hope for the same things anyway. We are in a time when everyone is going through very difficult times and we all have a different motivation to enjoy. My motivation is to produce something. I hope you can find such shelters for yourself too. Don't lose hope though and always keep the nostalgia of good times alive inside you love to everyone in the meantime uh, i will put the research links of everything i have told below and of course i will add the content i have been influenced by i will also put the playlist on that youtube see you in the next video